Welcome to Backwoods Pursuit. I'm Gabe Garish, and today we're going to take a look at the Asiac Equipment Backcountry Light Tripod and Backcountry Light Ball Head. This is an ultralight tripod and ball head setup that's designed to get you deep into the backcountry without weighing you down. And I've been testing this over the course of the last year, found its limitations, kind of where it's going to be as far as its sweet spot, but also where the situations are where you may not want to take this kind of a tripod. And we're going to go over its features and what makes this unique as well as some of the things that I liked and didn't like after using this out in the field over the course of the last year. I'll put a link to this down in the description so you can check it out for yourself, as well as a link to our website and social media channels. Go check those out. Those are all down in the description. Let's get started on this review. All right, to get started, let's take a look at some of the specs and details on the Asiac Equipment Backcountry Light tripod and ball head here. First, the weight, that's one of the most important things as far as when you're wanting to go ultralight with the tripod, weight is obviously a huge factor in that. The website says it's 20.4 ounces. However, on my scale, it actually came in at 19 and a half ounces, and that is with the longer center column here. And so you actually, is just under one ounce lighter than what the website says. So I always love it when that happens. Now the tripod head itself is, uh, gives you the features of pan and of course a tilt because it's a ball head here. So you're gonna have the ability to pan there and then a nice big lever here to allow you to tilt when needed. Now on my scale, it came in at 4.7 ounces for the, the head here and that is without the plate. Of course, depending on what plate you utilize here with this, it's gonna add an ounce or two. I believe the one that comes with this, uh, I weighed with this and it comes in at 5.9 ounces with the plate. So there are some lighter weight uh, uh, plates out there if you wanted to do that. You could swap that out for a, a more ultralight uh, Arca plate. And then of course it is Arca compatible, so it's gonna fit with just about anything else that you're using on the Arca side. And it's a twist lock style, so which gives you the ability to really be usable with any of the Arca style plates out there because they're not all exactly the same. And those the, the options where you have to slide that plate into uh, the, the, the grooves here, that can be a little bit tricky because you're having to constantly adjust that, which is real nice when you have them like this where it's a twist knob and it just locks it down onto whatever width that particular Arca is that you've picked up. Now the total weight with the backcountry light head, the longer column here, so basically the heaviest that you're gonna have this, comes in at 24.2 ounces on my scale. So again, super lightweight, and as you can see, nice and compact. The center column being what it is, we'll talk more about that, allows this to be very, very small and slide into your uh, pocket of your pack very easily. Um, and this is very unique in some of the unique design features that we'll go over in just a moment that allows you to do that. The max height on this goes out to 45 inches if you have both legs. And this has, again, three total leg sections, so it's two joints. That is nice because it makes it faster to deploy. But a max height of 45 inches there, and that's with the, all three of those sections extended and your center column here extended all the way up. So it, it's still for a sitting style tripod is very, very useful. It, it's gonna allow you to sit down even on really steep inclines and still be usable may have to extend that center column a little bit, but it's still very usable. Whereas sometimes sitting tripods can get a little bit on the short side if you're trying to save weight. So compared to some out there, you get a lot of height at 45 inches max height uh, for the weight that you get here. Now, conversely, you have the ability, of course, to open the leg angles up here. And this is really, really useful, particularly if you're using this center column, the shorter center column. This will go down to a minimum height of just three inches. So if you're wanting to use this for some different filming type of situations where you need to get low to the ground, you could even shoot off of it if you need to. It's of course not giving you the stability really that you want to be able to shoot off of this, but you, you could and being able to get that low to the ground is gonna be something that is very, very useful in that situation or just any situation where you really need to get that tripod really low to the ground for whatever the reasons are now, as far as usability, this of course is fantastic for using with binoculars. If you're putting your binoculars on a tripod, it does an excellent job that way. It's really the bread and butter of what this is designed to do. That's not to say it can't handle some spotting scopes. Of course, something small like this 
Koa 55, it's going to do really, really well and give you the ability to use this easily. This is only 27 ounces, so really about the weight of a lot of binoculars out there and even lighter than some. Now, it, for me personally, I did put some larger spotting scopes up to an 88 millimeter on here, that, something of that size. It did okay, but of course not great because it's really not designed to handle something that large and that heavy. About as big as I'd really want to go is something like this, a 66 millimeter, this Koa 66. It's going to do okay with this even. Even though it's not ideal, it's still going to give you enough stability to be able to use this effectively and not compromise the stability that you need in a, a tripod to use uh, when you're using this, a spotting scope. Now, one of the unique features of this as well that is lesser known that uh, to show you on the website, but I'll just go over really quickly here. With Particularly if you're using a larger spotting scope, this is very useful. There's a cutout right here on one side of this ball head where you can drop that down and then utilize this to lock in the, the spotting scope. And then you're gonna go ahead and, and roll the spotting scope up so it's vertical like this. And that's gonna give you a little more stability than you typically would get out of something like this. So you can lock that in. Now you have the ability to pan up and down um, based on that being notched in that little notch right there. So it gives you a, a more true uh, tilt than you would get with a typical ball head, but it allows you to still pan as well. So it's an extra feature that you've got with this that is useful. If you're running a larger spotting scope than it's really designed for, it gives you that extra ability. All right, now a couple of unique things about this tripod that you may want to consider if you're looking at this as a possible ultralight style hunting tripod. One thing that is unique that a lot of tripods don't have is just three leg sections. So you only have two joints here. So you have the ability to very quickly deploy legs and you can see how long those are. They're very nice and long for, for such a small tripod, which gives you that nice max height of 45 inches. So that is something that is unique about this, which I do like because of course you get into four and five leg sections, then you have more knobs to deal with and that's just more touch points to get to that position of glassing, which sometimes makes a big difference. If you're spotted a buck that's moving into the timber a long ways off, seconds matter to get a good look at that critter. Uh, another thing that is very unique about this, that uh, some tripods have out there, but not a lot of them, is this triangular design in the center column. I found that to be a little bit so more solid system and it allows you to clamp down on that center column and make this more usable at fully extended height than a round center column. So that's just my, my personal thoughts on that, but not necessarily scientific in that regard. Another thing that is unique about this is that you've got this short center column, which I mentioned earlier, that comes with it. That not only lightens this up by a little bit, but allows you that really low height of three inches uh, for a minimum height if you want to use that. And this thing is just 0.9 ounces. So if, even if it's the kind of thing you're thinking you may not use, you can throw it in your pack just in case you want to use it and have it with you for less than an ounce. So it's really not a big deal if you wanted to take that with you. If you kind of want to swap them out back and forth, it's really quick and easy to do that. So. Uh, something that I do really like about that, that, that comes with that. It's not an extra add-on or accessory that you, uh, that you have the option for. It just comes with the tripod. Now the ball head over here, it is a nice little ball head. It has your typical features. You have a, 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 the ball head movement here and a little nice lever here that is very user-friendly in, in that nice large lever. It's really easy with or without gloves to use. And then you have the pan adjustment right here. It's nice uh, fluid pan, so it's nice and smooth. Allows you to really pan uh, effectively. And if you got a little bit too much tension like I do right now, you can just tighten or loosen that up just a little bit and get really nice and smooth. So it's very, very smooth in its pan. Uh, the tilt or the ball function here is a little bit more difficult to, to get what you need because by, by nature, ball heads are more that way. Uh, but it just kind of is what it is with that. We have a lot more flexibility and a little bit of weight savings with that ball head. Uh, so that, that is to be expected. It's just harder to find that perfect tension point here where you can still move the, the optic here, not side to side so much, not the pan like we mentioned. That has a nice functionality, but the tilt is a little bit more difficult. If you loosen up just enough to be able to move that, then that, there's that fine line here between so loose that it's just gonna fall down versus tight enough that it's gonna move and then stick where you need it to. So it's, it's that constant battle, but it's, it's for a ball head. It does a pretty darn good job 
particularly for its cost and for its weight. Now, one of the limitations that I found with this and something that I didn't love about it was uh, something you might be able to notice a bit here is just how narrow the leg stance is on this tripod. It, it certainly can be combated by opening that up and the, other, the buttons there allow you for a wider leg angle there. That's also going to shorten the tripod significantly for you. And so if you do that, you've got the ability to you know, open this up and with your sitting on the side of a mountain, you can extend these fully out and do like you oftentimes do with a tripod like this, open up these legs and then you know, open, fully extend them. And if you're on a steep hill, you can put them around your waist like that so you're using your optic such as that. Um, the, the downside though is that you kind of need to do that because that leg's stance here is so narrow uh, that if they are in the fully, uh, the position that, the first position that you have here, it is fairly narrow. And what that does is, uh, particularly at, at when you're at full height or when you're at some of the higher heights, if you don't have the legs opened up more so, then it makes it pretty tippy. To where a point where I wouldn't be real comfortable putting a big optic on here without opening and widening the stance of these legs. So it's not an uncommon thing with particular with ultralight tripods, um, but it is something to take note of. And it's probably my, the least favorite thing that for me on this tripod is just how narrow that is. Uh, because it requires really that if you want that extra stability that you got to open that up and then that shortens the, the overall height of the tripod significantly. All right, now finally my pros and cons after using this tripod setup. And again, I used it with binoculars and spotting scopes, large and small, to kind of get a feel for what its limitations are. Uh, the things that I loved about this, of course, the weight. It's an incredibly small and compact and it packs up really, really small. That, that triangular center column allows for such a small profile here. It slides into just about any pack really, really easily. Doesn't hang up on your pack and makes it really nice and easy to store in your backpack. At right around 20 ounces, you hardly even notice it's there. So it makes the decision of taking a tripod or not really easy, being as lightweight as it is with the functionality and height that you get. That range of three to 45 inches is awesome. You've got a massive range for such a small and lightweight tripod. I also like those, those two or three leg sections with the two joints there. That just makes it that much easier to use and deploy this quickly when you need to. And it just makes it a lot easier overall to use as a tripod. I love the triangular column. It just seems to provide a little bit of extra stability. And then I also really like this little triangular cutout that gives you that extra functionality. If you are gonna use this with a spotting scope, and you can have a little bit extra stability and a little bit extra use in being able to go ahead and use that uh, in a pan and tilt function, which you can't normally get out of a ball head. So that is a nice, uh, nice functionality that you get with this backcountry light ball head. For a 4.7 ounce ball head, it gives you lots of features. There are lighter ball heads out on the market, certainly, but you might be hard pressed to find one with this much functionality and this, these nice features with that weight. Now, as far as a few things I didn't particularly love about this, the, the main one for me and by far the thing that I liked the least was how narrow the, the leg stance is. It just makes it more unstable and a little more tipsy, particularly when you get that thing extended to some of the higher heights. And if you put anything with much weight, like a spotting scope on top of here, it makes it really, uh, it makes me a little bit nervous uh, if you're going that full length and without, of course, extending the width of that the, the legs like that. Now, to be fair, most of the time when I'm glassing and sitting down glassing with, the, with my binoculars or even a spotting scope, I do that anyways to make sure I can pull that tripod in real close and be relaxed when I'm glassing. So functionally, it's not really a big deal because you know, I end up doing that with most tripods anyhow. But if you're using it and don't need that, it's gonna be significantly and noticeably more tipsy than some of the others out there. That's by far my biggest complaint about this. But again, functionally, it really, in the field, when I'm using it, I don't even really notice that uh, because most of the time I do have those legs uh, pulled out farther anyways. So the other smaller thing about this is that it, for, for a tripod like this, 15 and a half inches fold to length is on the long side, but I'm personally really okay with that because you only have the two uh, joints here, three total leg sections, makes it so much quicker to deploy. Some people having a really short tripod when it's folded is really important. So if that's the case, 
you know, 15 and a half inches isn't certainly long, but it's not, uh, it's not super compact either in that regard. So fine, uh, fine as far as I'm concerned, but something that you want to be aware of, the full the length being 15 and a half inches is something that may concern some folks on an ultralight tripod like this. So that is the Asiac Equipment Backcountry Light Tripod and Ball Head. Um, a fantastic combination, a really, really good option for an ultralight tripod. When you really want to save weight, maybe you're going in for a week or 10 days, and weight really, really matters, and you don't want to take a two or three pound tripod, this gives you significant weight savings uh, where you can be well under two pounds easily with the tripod and the head. So that's pretty significant. It's a big deal to have this kind of performance out of something that lightweight. Again, I'm gonna put a link to this down in the description and drop any questions or comments. Love to answer them if I can and, and help in any way that I can. Thanks for watching here today and we will see you next time.